Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. I'm your host, Matt Hines. Very excited to have you here uh, every week, as always, Thursdays at 1130 Pacific, 230 Eastern. Uh, if you are watching live on LinkedIn, uh, so happy that you're joining us in the middle of your work day. The advantage of watching live is you can be part of the show. If you have a question for our guest today, if you have a question or comment related to our topic today, we're going to talk about the, some of the new rules of remote hybrid sales, how to manage it, how to do it. Uh, very much looking forward to this conversation. Uh, feel free to throw that into uh, the chat, into the comments and LinkedIn, and uh, we will we could reference some of those, may even bring you into the show. If you are watching this or listening on demand, thank you very much for all of your subscriptions and downloads. Uh, we're up to about 335 episodes of this program, all available on demand at salespipelineradio.com. Very excited to have our guest today is the VP of Global Sales at LaView, Rob Gattel. Rob, thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me, Matt. I'm really happy to join and um, excited about our talk. So you have, as I mentioned this before, you, you have one of the more unique uh, resumes just over, in terms of managing sales over the last couple of years. You've got sort of a pre-COVID period, a during COVID period. You're fairly new at Lava You now as well. Um, I'm, I mean, on the front lines as a as a sales executive, you have seen various phases of the evolution of um, sort of managing sales and sort of this remote hybrid sales. What have you seen change and what are some trends that you saw maybe before that have been accelerated now uh, because of COVID? Yeah, it's an interesting question and it's an interesting thing to contemplate. Um, you know, in terms of the work world, sales has always been, at least in my world, sales has always been remote. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, the, the, the team has always, you know, pretty much worked out of their homes. We're used to, uh, so from a leadership standpoint, leading a team used to working in that environment, you know, where you're not together with the people on your team very often, mm -hmm. you've got to manage them. You've got to motivate them. You've got to, um, you know, ensure great sales performance. So not much has changed there. Uh, although periodically, uh, you know, I would be in the field with them. You know, obviously that's changed. Yeah. At least temporarily during this COVID time. The big change has been with how we deal with uh, prospective customers, how we how we actually interface with uh, our prospects. So that has traditionally always been in person. And mm -hmm. you know, we've, we've always found, as I'm sure everybody would agree, that that's the most effective way to deal with, uh, to have sales meetings, to be able to uh, be in person, be able to make that human connection, be able to uh, read the room, um, you know, in, on, you know, live. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, before and after the meeting, you learn an awful lot, uh, you know, while you're getting set up, you're talking to your contacts. And then uh, afterwards, when you break down and you're on the way to the elevator, those are very valuable minutes yeah. where you actually learn uh, how you did, how you, you know, what the, you know, what the, the, the initiative is with the prospect. So obviously we don't have that now we have to, you know, everything is done by appointment at start. It, it's a hard start and a hard mm -hmm. stop. Mm -hmm. You don't get those fringe moments uh, that are so important. So, um, you know, sales is all about making a connection and helping the client and being curious about the client's business, the client's job, uh, so that hasn't changed. It's just more, probably more difficult to do that, uh, you know, on a video call. So let's, let's dive into that a little bit. Cause I think you're right. I think, you know, there's, you know, I mean, honestly, I think, you know, back when we were just on the phone, very, very different than being in person. I would argue that like when we can see each other, you can see my facial expressions. I can see your body language. There's elements of that in-person piece that still exists. But the before and after, I love that you described those fringe moments, those before and after moments when, you know, you walk into someone's office. Someone taught me once when you walk into someone's office, like, look at the walls, what's on the walls and what's on the walls is what they prioritize and what they love. And it gives you some, some, you know, um, some small talk opportunities or just learn more about the person. Um, I love, you know, obviously when you're walking out, you can sort of comment on that or just talk about, hey, I noticed you're, you know, you got an Alabama sign, like big game coming up. Those are different now because we do have hard stops. How do you recommend remote sellers try to replace that? What are some tactics that you see are working to try to still build some rapport and connection with prospects remotely? 
Yeah, boy, I don't know if I have the um, <clears throat> I don't I don't know if I have all the answers to that. But but the first of all, there are and most people don't think about this. There are little things that you can do. For example, looking into the camera. You know, you shouldn't. You know, the, the camera should be focused right on and uh, you know right on you. You should have mm -hmm. adequate lighting. You should be you know speaking slowly, speaking uh, you know and. Just those things that uh, make it a more uh, a warmer meeting, uh, and you know I, you can still have eye to eye contact. You know I see a lot of uh, folks that don't have good, they don't have good audio, they don't have good lighting. Um, you know there's uh, just you know just discomfort, mm -hmm. um, and making it harder to connect you know human to human on a virtual call. So that that's something that's easy. That's um, you know that that you can do. Um, just, and then you just have to do the best you can. I don't really have, uh, you know, by, by making sure that you, the other thing that is really important that salespeople, I think make frequent uh, mistakes on frequently is if they're doing a demonstration, they go right up to the last minute and, and, uh, oh, uh don't leave any time for questions, for wrap up, for small talk, for, um, and, and that's really the most important time. You've got to leave, you know, the, 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 the tendency is to show everything you know about your product, your service, and, uh, and, and you frequently run out of time, of course, because you're going too deep, taking too long in some areas. So you've got to leave that 10 minutes, you know, even 15 mm -hmm. to wrap up, get their feedback, learn more. You know, did you hit what they were interested in? Um, you know, it's an opportunity to, to probe more and ask more about. Uh, you know, the challenges they're facing, does this seem to solve your, you know, so you've got to have that talk, you've got to have that, uh, you know, that interaction, and that, and that warmth and, and connection. We're talking today on sales, sales pipeline radio with Rob Gattel, he's the VP of global sales at LaView. And I think, you know, what you're what, what I'm hearing from you is that the process of selling and relationship building is no different. The formats and channels we have have changed and we have to adopt the tactics of how we do that there, including knowing you're not going to have a few minutes to walk them to the elevator. You need to do that in the meeting time. And so adjusting to that is important. Um, I mean, LaView is, is, is global. You got, you, you own selling across various markets. Um, I remember back when I was, um, I was working in a company selling to, to real estate agents and we had different, approaches for East Coast realtors than we did for West Coast realtors when they were calling just because there were regional cultural differences in terms of how people wanted to have that conversation. Um, do you, how, are there regional cultural differences that you're seeing in a remote world when you've got sellers, North America, Europe, Asia, et cetera? Yeah, good question. I don't necessarily buy into that. I, I, you know, you've got to deal with the person that's in front of you. Mm -hmm. whether that's a virtual or in person. So it might be that there's cultural differences, even if you're in the same state, you know, you could be dealing with somebody that is quite different from you um, culturally or just behaviorally, or, or maybe not, you know, I, I've, uh, I've led sales teams. I lived in Australia for the last three years and covered uh, or three years previous to law view. And, uh, and I, and I led teams across Asia Pacific and I, you know, there are more similarities than differences and you've got to, there's no, you cannot make assumptions about, uh Oh, I'm going in and uh, talking to, you know, a New York company. So obviously they're going to be impatient, direct to the point, you know, you can't make a, an assumption about the person you're about to meet before you've even met them. Right. You've got to get to know them, see what, you know, what makes them tick. Um, see what, you know, what problems and, and the minute you, you know, wh whether it's virtual or in person, they're going to see whether you're interested in them and their business or whether they're interested in just making a sale and going through a checklist of, of conversation. Um, and so I, I really don't buy into uh, painting with a broad brush about a person or a company based on whether it's East Coast, West Coast or other countries, you know, U.S. You've got to deal with the person in front of you. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, let's pivot a little bit to uh, sort of career development. Um, 
I mean, I, I really feel for a lot of people that are new in sales, that are new to joining teams, that are new to, you know, joining the sales ranks, maybe fresh college grads that, you know, I know early in my career, you know, having a team that you got together, hearing other people sell, seeing other people sell, having sort of mentorship relationships, even just grabbing a beer after work and just sort of chatting about your day and sort of that camaraderie and the learning of junior versus senior with senior people. How do you replace that? Like, how do you continue to sort of build early sales careers when you don't have that environment the same way anymore? Yeah. In my sales career, I've never, well, not never, but in the beginning, the first, probably for the first um, 15 years, we were all remote. So I remember I started in, with Thomson Reuters in 1998 as a sales rep, and I was remote. I was in Arizona at the time. Uh, the company was based in, in Minneapolis. My manager was, uh, you know, was in Los Angeles. Um, you know, I would rarely see him. Um, um. So I was I was dealing with that kind of a situation, uh, no di no different than than now. Um, but I think there are some things that apply today, just as they did then. If I think about like how did I get acclimated, even though I was by myself in my home office? Well, having a mentor on the team, um, you know, making friends on the team, having regular calls, you know, sharing experiences. I remember, you know, I would I would sometimes have hours to drive from Phoenix to Las Vegas, you know, covering, you know, going on appointments in my territory. I would frequently call colleagues and, you know, we would talk and, you know, sometimes commiserate, sometimes celebrate together. So just having, you know, making those connections internally. And so now as a sales leader, when I have somebody start new, you know, I set them up with a mentor or somebody that's more experienced on the team. I encourage connections, the connections between that new person and not only the other folks on my team, but not only the other folks on, on the team, but, um, you know, other folks that they're going to interact with around the company, you know, in marketing or in product development or in sales support. So just encouraging regular conversation so that they don't feel like they're on an island, you know, all by themselves having to learn to sink or swim. Mm hmm. Um, we talked earlier a little bit about sort of, you know, you know, selling into multiple regions and really just treating people like people. Let's let's have this, the same discussion, but let's talk about sort of the persona and the role you're selling into. I mean, look, you spent most of your career selling into the legal space, currently law of you, selling to in-house legal, legal counsel. Um, how much do you, I mean, how much adjustment are you making to that audience and what kind of lessons have you learned over time that may be unique to people selling into the legal space? Yeah, again, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's really well, I don't think it's that unique. So the the folks that we, you know, the, so the personas that we're dealing with day in, day out, lawyers, uh, you know, at, at LawView, our product speaks to the in-house legal department. So the, the corporate legal department, not necessarily law firms. So those people are very, very busy, whether they're lawyers, you know, legal operations folks, paralegals, staff lawyers within the department. They're all extremely busy. They're all, they have way too much work to do and not enough time in the day. You know, they probably didn't wake up that morning thinking that they needed to speak with us. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so we've got to, we've got, so the, the most effective way to sell it, sell in recent years is digital marketing to where the marketing department is, uh, they're really generating very thoughtful pieces uh, you know, that, in, you know, to try to gain interest. Uh, maybe it's a thought leadership piece. Maybe it's a, you know, have you thought about tackling, you know, this problem, uh, you know, and, and putting it out on LinkedIn or direct email and then letting those folks uh, that, uh, that, you know, that see something interesting, raise their hands, ask for a demo. Um, so obviously in a perfect world, all of your leads would come from, you know, people raising their hands and coming to you rather than you doing the traditional prospecting of, of cold calling or cold emailing. But, you know, I, there's probably no sales organization in the world that, you know, that, that has, you know, that can exist on just those, you know, you've got to do reach outs outbound. Uh, you've got to do grassroots prospecting as a sales professional. So, um, you know, you've just got to say that, you know, you, your messaging has to be spot on. 
Mm -hmm. um, and and you've got to say that you you've got to think about what the whether it's the lawyer in the department, the general counsel, him or herself, the legal operations person. You've got to think about what are their problems likely to be, um, and uh, you know before you talk to them. And if you can say a few things to catch their attention, and if it's a if it's a key problem that's keeping them up at night, they're going to want to talk to you. Um, you know, same thing as a sales leader. I think about if somebody called me and they said the right thing at the right time about that they've got a tool that might help, you know, uh, accelerate deals through our pipeline and help us re meet, meet our targets and uh, get salespeople onboarded more quickly. If they said some of the things that are top of mind with me, you know, I'd probably want to talk to them. Yeah, yeah, I I, lo I agree with you. It's it's knowing what the problems are, and then even even further, sort of knowing when those problems pop up and become hotter for that prospect. And the more you can sort of understand those general focus areas, as well as understand sort of maybe more dynamic, you know, heat map heat in intense signals of when they're coming up, more likely at the attention. And just like you said, you know, having a great marketing department that can provide you know those commercial insights, that can provide content. Um, it's not just marketing campaigns that are generating those. Some of the best salespeople are using those as well, and um, I mean, let's, let's, you know, let's not forget, like if a new prospect, you got this crazy busy in-house counsel, like you're the mailman driving by a house at 35 miles an hour, trying to throw something in a mailbox. If they don't know who you are yet, there's gonna be a lot of mail, but mail that misses. And when you do get something in there, is it valuable? Is it useful for them? Is it helping them make sense or, of, or understand something in their world differently? So love that approach. Well, Rob, I know you're busy guy. I want to let you go. Um, but thank you so much for joining us, sharing some insights. One of my big takeaways from this is you know, sometimes we worry too much about sort of some of the differences between different people, different regions, different industries, really just having that common approach to creating value, being empathetic and sensitive to their time and interest, uh, focusing on their value. Um, I don't know, pre post, you know, pre during post COVID, that seems pretty universally valuable to me. Yeah, great. I've enjoyed the conversation, Matt, and anybody that's listening, I love to connect with other sales leaders, share ideas and, you know, see how everybody's doing things. And, and uh, so, feel free to link link up with me on, on LinkedIn and uh, happy to connect. Awesome. Well, Rob Gattel, he's the VP of global sales at LaVue. Uh, quick shout out for a new group uh, that I know just formed about a month ago called the CRO Coffee Talk. Uh, Chief Revenue Officers, Heads of Sales getting together on a bi-weekly basis doing exactly what Rob's looking for. So uh, thank you everyone for watching us live. For those of you listening on demand, appreciate the download and listen. We'll be here next week again with more talk on B2B sales and marketing. My name is Matt Hines. Thanks for watching and listening. Another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio.